Getting sore after a workout is absolutely miserable. And there's some stuff that you can do in addition to just taking your jigsaw magnesium. But first off, I have to break down what exactly delayed onset muscle soreness is, and then I'll get to the foods that you can consume to start getting the best effect and start feeling better. All right, so first and foremost, delayed onset muscle soreness is that soreness that you feel about two days after a workout. Generally, it's gonna start to take effect about 12 hours after a workout, and it's gonna peak somewhere between 12 and 72 hours after your workout. That's why a lot of times it takes two, three days before you're ever really feeling the effects of a hard workout. What we do know about delayed onset muscle soreness is that it's triggered by working out with an unaccustomed load. So it means that you don't have to be an extreme athlete. You don't have to be anyone that's doing any crazy activity to get a level of soreness. Even a super extreme athlete that's working with an unaccustomed load is going to feel a level of soreness. But let's talk about what delayed onset muscle soreness really is and what causes it. Okay? See, a lot of people think it's the actual trauma, the actual breakdown of the muscle fibers itself, but it's not. It has nothing to do with that. In fact, to be completely honest, there's not a whole lot of evidence pointing to anything in particular that causes it. It's actually one of the big exercise science mysteries of the world right now. But there's some science that's starting to point to a couple really particular things, and they have nothing to do with trauma. You see, the first one is an increase in hydrogen ions. Okay? Whenever we have any kind of cellular metabolism, we have hydrogen as a byproduct. But we also have free radical oxygen as a byproduct. So if you've ever heard of the term free radicals before, well, that's exactly what we're talking about, a byproduct of cellular metabolism. Now, this cellular waste and this metabolic process can actually damage the structural layer of a cell, particularly the muscle cell. So in this case, we're talking about the sarcolemma. When we damage the sarcolemma, that could be what's causing the soreness. So we're really having more of an oxidative stress issue than we are having a trauma issue. That's pretty darn crazy. Now let's talk about a couple of the quick misconceptions, okay? The first one is one that I already mentioned, muscle trauma. It's not the muscle trauma that's making you sore. The next misconception is that you have to get sore in order to improve next time. So a lot of times people think that they have to get sore in order to build muscle. Or if they're not getting sore, then they're not having a good workout. Well, that isn't the case at all. In fact, if you're getting sore, you're triggering that inflammatory response. And that inflammatory response is prohibiting you from really taking that next step. So if you're super sore, you're more likely to be doing more damage than good. You just wanna find that nice little sweet spot of just a little bit of soreness, okay? Another misconception is that people think it's lactic acid causing the soreness. It's not. Lactic acid has nothing to do with the overall metabolic response in the body as far as delayed onset muscle soreness is concerned. Lactic acid is a byproduct of metabolism when we're working out during the activity. It has nothing to do with changing the pH or anything like that that people will tell you. Okay, so now let's get to the foods. Now that we know that overall it's oxidative stress that causes the issue, we know that we need very potent antioxidants and anti-inflammatories to reduce the soreness and get us back in the gym and feeling our best as fast as possible. The first one is blueberries. Now I know I usually promote a low carb lifestyle and that's all fine and dandy, but implementing some blueberries throughout the course of the day can make a big difference in overall how your body responds to the stress. And it has to do with something known as anthocyanins. Anthocyanins are a very unique antioxidant and I've got a study that's gonna prove it. This was a randomized crossover study that took 10 female participants, okay? And half of these participants received a blueberry smoothie and the other half received another antioxidant fruit smoothie, okay? Neither group knew which one they were getting. And what they were looking at here was the overall levels of soreness and inflammatory markers with each group. Well, they gave both of these groups their smoothies directly before their workouts, right after their workouts, and then about a day later as well. Well, they also measured their biomarkers right after a workout and a couple days after the workout. What they ultimately ended up finding out was that those that consumed the blueberry smoothie ended up having much less of the overall inflammatory cytokine activity and the overall levels of inflammation in general than the group that didn't have the blueberry smoothie. They also found that there was less feelings of perceived pain. That means the delayed onset muscle soreness actually had less of an impact on the person themselves. They felt less sore. Now this is comparing apples and apples, just two different kinds of apples, proving that blueberries really have the anthocyanin power to help you feel a lot better after a workout. All right, now let's move into the next one. We're talking about omega-3s, which I'm always touting the benefits of left and right. I think every single one of my videos I'm talking about omega-3s. Omega-3s have a unique mechanism in which they relate directly with delayed onset muscle soreness. You see, omega-3s trigger something known as a resolvent. Even the name sounds amazing, resolvent. It's like it's resolving an issue. 
And what these resolvents do is they reduce inflammation associated with particular inflammatory cytokines. So we're talking about interleukin-6 and tumor necrosis factor 1 alpha, two inflammatory markers that are directly correlated with delayed onset muscle soreness. So this resolvent has a direct impact on muscle soreness directly through inflammation. Okay, now I have a study that's gonna back this one up as well. This one was published in the Clinical Journal of Sports Medicine, a pretty reputable organization. Okay, and what this looked at was participants that consumed 1.8 grams of omega-3s on days that they work out and those that did not consume the omega-3s. Well, the results were quite simple and quite black and white. They found that those that consumed the omega-3s ended up having a dramatic decrease in delayed onset muscle soreness a couple days after their workout compared to those that didn't. There was zero difference between the two groups immediately after the workout, which tells us that the omega-3s reduce the inflammation associated with the delayed soreness, not just the immediate recovery, which is what we're talking about in this video. Lastly, let's talk about curcumin, good old turmeric. And this is why I'm always putting this in my post-workout food and why I'm always consuming it left and right and why I'm always touting the benefits of it. Curcumin has some interesting components to it, but for the sake of this video, it works on something known as nuclear factor kappa B. Okay, that nuclear factor kappa B is like the master inflammatory signal. If we can reduce that, we can reduce the inflammation and our bodies can start to recover better. What this study looked at was 17 men that hadn't worked out in about 60 days. Okay, so it particularly took people that hadn't worked out for a while so that we knew they would get sore. Okay, and what was ultimately discovered was that those that ended up consuming curcumin before and after their workout ended up having much lower levels of inflammation, but they had lower levels of what's known as creatine kinesev. This creatine kinesev is directly correlated with muscle breakdown. And if we have lower levels of that, it means the muscles aren't breaking down anymore. Now, you might be wondering, don't we want the muscles to break down? That's how we get stronger. Yes, we do, but we don't want the muscles to be breaking down two or three days later. That means we're not recovering. That means we can't get into the gym. That means we can't get the protein synthesis and the metabolic response that we want. We want the creatine kinesa levels to be elevated right after the workout, not two days after. So therefore, curcumin is showing that it can actually reduce those creatine kinesa levels a couple days later so you can get back in the gym and get the results that you want as fast as possible. As always, keep it locked in here with Jigsaw. And I know I threw a lot of science at you, but there's a lot of science to be talked about when it comes down to good old fashioned domes. I will see you in the next video.